Good morning everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We are in the Thursday of the fourth week in Ordinary Time. Our text today is taken from Mark chapter 6, verse 7 to 13. And I've entitled today's teaching, All of Us Helping All of Us. So let's read the text first. Open your Bibles, Mark chapter 6, verse 7 to 13. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and to put and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think that uh, most people would simply roll over and give up if they were rejected by their very own family in the pursuit of their missions or their dreams. We've seen several people in life who have told you that they felt tremendously rejected by the fact that their family did not accept them or accept the way in which they wanted to move in life. Now, that's not the case with Jesus. When you look at the Gospels, you will realize that Jesus does not give up because he was rejected by his own townsfolk. In fact, uh, in the Gospel of Mark, you will see that he is rejected by his family, by the people from Nazareth. He does not give up. He simply gives in to the mission of his father, having been rejected himself, experiencing that rejection, he does quite the opposite when it comes to others. He empowers the others and in particular today, he empowers the twelve. And what kind of power he gives them? He gives them, the word is authority in verse 7. His authority given to him by the father, his very authority he hands over, or rather he shares that uh, authority with his disciples. He, give, he gives them authority in particular over unclean spirits. Yet, as we see, and we will see later, these very 12 <laughs> empowered apostles will also begin to doubt the mission of Jesus. And that doubt is seen in various ways, not just... I doubt the Lord and what he is doing, but that doubt is often seen in our behavior when instead of focusing on his mission, I focus on myself because the apostles will begin to seek for themselves personal glory, they will seek for themselves power. They who had authority, who have been given authority, such tremendous authority, rather seek personal glory and seek power. But for now, the gospel of today focuses on the mission that Jesus shares with them. And that's why the title today also is the mission of the twelve. You will find this text in the gospel of Matthew in chapter 10 verse 5 to 15 in the gospel of Luke chapter 9, uh, 1 verses 1 to 6. So, in all the three synoptics, you will find the mission of the twelve. Now, looking at all of this uh, makes one sit up and take notice of the fact that Jesus, in that sense, uh, could have easily run this entire ship by himself. Um, he didn't need the others. But Jesus is not a solo artist. He is, after all, God. 
and he most certainly did not need our help. But that's exactly what he did. You see, Jesus' plan for salvation included all of us helping all of us. And he began with 12. Now, if Jesus ever started a company, um, an organization of his own, um, a business of his own, I think um, Jesus would have hit losses in the very first month simply because by human standards uh, the people who he chose the 12 that he picked up for mission could only be categorized in today's terminology as losers now i'm not calling the 12 apostles losers i'm simply saying that the way the world looks if they look at their bio data of the 12 or did a background search on them or checked up their history on on Facebook or uh, any of their social um, media accounts, they would have said these 12 guys chosen by Jesus are complete losers. Their actions, if you look at them, I mean, I can just imagine St. Peter's Facebook page, what it would have looked like. His actions range from, uh, they, together, their actions range from betrayal, um, denial, Peter denied the Lord, abandonment, they ran away from him at the Garden of Gethsemane, they had fits of anger. I mean, look at Peter, he, uh, which person uh, just takes off a, a sword and starts chopping off people's ears. Uh, they had tremendous doubts, can anything come from Nazareth? Uh, they had unrestrained opinions about, uh, you know, uh, sh shall we call down fire and brimstone upon our enemies? They had just about every opinion and uh, rather, they seemed sometimes a bit unhinged. Yet, if you look at the way Jesus operates, who did he give authority to? He gave authority and mission to what the world would have considered complete losers. Which brings me to the point I really want to make um, looking at today's text. God never looks for perfect people. But God takes imperfection, imperfection in all of us. Uh, there's only one thing that God demands from us. He doesn't demand for us to be perfect. He demands for us to be open to his grace. Um, I don't know whether I've ever shared this with you, but I share this very often at children's mass where I tell the children that, you know, when I was in the seventh standard, I could barely pass mathematics. I was in St. Mary's ICSE. I took a distinct dislike to a particular mathematics teacher. I still know her name, but I'm not going to say it. And uh, she made my life very, very hard, I think. It made me feel very small, very little, and I hated mathematics. And I detested mathematics all the way to my 10th standard. And yet, um, when I reached college in St. Andrews, I took commerce, I simply did so well. Yeah? Uh, if God, if the world had to look at Father Warner in the 7th standard, they would have said, I don't think this guy is capable of being a priest. He's not capable of passing uh, his examinations. And I want to also say this, that I had to work very, very hard even in the seminary, even now, I, people think, oh, Father, it comes to you. Many people say, uh, oh, it must be so easy for you to preach a homily. No, it's not. Uh, I'm not perfect. I often admit to very close people, I can tell you this, that if I ever I have to raise a toast, till today, uh, my hands tremble when I'm standing there. Yeah, I have a nice trick to uh, calm my trembling hands. I always ask for a mic stand and a mic, so I hold on to the mic so that uh, I don't tremble too much, but I still get nervous. And it's my, it sounds strange. God doesn't choose uh, perfect people. He chooses imperfect people. You know, when, the, when Jesus gave the 12 authority and mandate, he, it was really an extension of his own ministry of teaching and healing. Jesus uh, did not make the 12 that he chose today some kind of part-time assistance. No. 
when God chooses us, he makes us full-time ministers. Now, you will also see that Jesus demands a certain lack of creature comforts. Why does he do that? The lack of creature comforts for the mission is not to be interpreted merely as a life of poverty. Some people reading this would feel, oh my goodness, I mean, um, no bread, no bag. I can just take a staff and I can wear sandals. I can't even carry two tunics. Uh, is this interpreted as a life of poverty for the apostles, for me? No, it's rather to communicate the urgency of the mission and the trust one has, uh, one is to put in God, in God's providence that when I take on mission, when I take on a new parish, and I know I, I, I know I'm teaching you this, but sometimes I fail in my own uh, myself. God wants us to trust in His providence, that He will provide, He will take care of us. And I can tell you I'm a witness of this because um, I have to often say to the Lord, uh, "Depart from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man because I didn't trust in your providence. But God provides tremendously for us. And so he says to all of us on mission, I will provide for you. You know, uh, when I started this, um, these recordings, I had no clue. I, we didn't even want to do it. COVID just imposed it on us. Uh, but I remember initially, um, we needed a very good iPhone camera, which was, I think, about a lakh of rupees. We needed a computer, which was a lakh of rupees. We needed um, some, uh, you know, these stands and these wires and these mics and these lights and and it came. In fact, through many of you, I believe God still provides. There's so much of work here that we have achieved in seven months. Uh, I said it the other day in my pastoral message, uh, which has come pr primarily because of wonderful people who have helped us to work for this ministry. Both the online ministry, St. Stephen's, the St. Stephen's Table, the church, the Love, Joy, Hope Foundation, even when the Love, Joy, Hope Foundation moved to Goa, uh, we didn't know what was God's plan. And he provided us with a home, he provided us with donors. You continue to, to reach out and help us. So uh, in that sense, God helps us. Now, today I've spent um, quite a lot of time teaching you this. There are many, many takeaways from many lessons that we can learn from today's gospel. I want you to just sit back, pick one of these uh, messages and see what is it that God is calling me to? Is he calling me to mission? Is he calling me to share in that mission? Even a mission where he shares his authority to, to take away unclean spirits. What is God calling me to? Is he calling me to a simpler way of life? To bear testimony to him? So don't be, um, I want to say this, don't be too um, upset sometimes when you feel, you know, how can God call me? There are people who feel, I'm so unworthy, I'm so unworthy. Yeah, God can call anyone. Remember, when he calls, he empowers. So don't worry about, are you going to be a good preacher? Are you going to be a good teacher? Are you going to be successful? Just be faithful. That's all. Mother Teresa always said this. God has not called me to be successful. She said, God has called me to be faithful. You stay faithful to God and God will provide for your every need. So I want to thank you for joining me in this uh, morning uh, session. I want to pray with you together because that's the most important thing. It also gives me an opportunity to continue to spend my day in these little moments of prayer. So let us pray together. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, I want to pray today for all those who may feel called to serve you, to serve your church, but who feel diffident. Lord, the priesthood and the religious life is no longer easy. We are few the demands on our time, the exhaustion sometimes we feel, the emotional disconnect from people sometimes, the demands, 
all of this makes it so difficult and yes lord we continue to say yes to you fill the yes of your lay ministers fill the yes of your priests fill the yes of your religious sisters and brothers and men with the power that comes from you alone the authority that comes from you alone i want to pray especially for many many lay people lord who serve your church never being even sometimes recognized i want to pray for them especially in their moments of discouragement when they feel they want to give up i want to pray lord jesus that we clergy and religious may also share our ministry with the lay people respecting them respecting their time respecting their energy i want to pray today for vocations i know lord that it's been so difficult these last few years here in the archdiocese of bombay we've been struggling two vocations three vocations i pray that you may touch today the hearts of young people I pray for many many more lay collaborators to join their church ministries. We are so few, Lord. In every parish we see the same faces doing everything. But the outer circle continues to grow. A circle that does not seem to want to serve your church. I pray for them too, Lord. Touch their hearts, touch their lives. In your loving name I make this prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you and may almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um I want to thank you for joining me each day for uh, 9 o'clock with Father Warner. As you are also aware we've been broadcasting the mass here from St Stephen's. Mostly we've been broadcasting them live this entire week we'll be broadcasting it live, but when I travel I have already begun to record some of the masses uh, in the for the future so that uh, you constantly are nourished by the eucharist um i don't forget to like this video to share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it Re leave your comments and thank you once again i thanked you during this uh, talk that i gave but i want to thank you again for all of you who support this ministry for the love joy hope foundation that you support on behalf of nadia and lenny suarez myself and my staff Wilson and Ryan I want to thank you for all that you do for us God bless you